Hi guys, it's Debbie and today I would like to speak about what I personally consider some very good movies but which unfortunately never managed to reach a huge international fame. And no, I haven't purposely hand-picked the most hipster, low-budget, indie, alternative short films just to give myself an air of an interesting air of film connoisseur. As a matter of fact, you might be completely familiar with some of the films on this list and they might be really popular in the area from where you're from. The first film on this list is Submarine, a 2010 film starring Craig Roberts. It is set in the 80s and follows the life of Oliver Tate, an outcast and generally unpopular teenager which is struggling uh, with getting through the hard times of adolescence. He has a bright mind and an artistic streak but tends to be ignored and struggles with his feelings, especially towards schoolmate Jordana, a rebellious girl which appears to display a completely opposite personality from his. Submarine is a beautiful depiction of adolescence. It is light and ironic with Craig Roberts exaggerating his character's thoughts and feelings with one-liners and and oddly funny situations, but it can also be very dark, introducing concepts which touch some deeper tones. The film makes an excellent use of colour and settings, as a background to the film is this quaint small village in Wales with some absolutely stunning views of the ocean and the surrounding countryside. It explores concepts such as personality, overcoming struggles, growing and being misunderstood in a very peculiar way. As we follow Oliver and his thoughts on his journey of self-discovery, his relationship with his parents and his peers. Submarine is completely different from any other film of the same genre. I would recommend watching it to anybody, in particular to those who are looking for a higher quality, deeper, aesthetically pleasing, more mature but strangely funny version of the usually ultra sexualized, over comedic, coming of age subject. Also on the plus side, Alex Turner, the singer of Arctic Monkeys, created many songs included in the soundtrack. Changing completely genre, the next film I'd like to speak about is Perfume Story of a Murder a 2006 film starring Alan Rickman, Dustin Hoffman and Ben Whishaw. The film is set in the 18th century and the way by which I discovered this film was through studying German literature in high school because the film is based on the novel of the same name by Patrick Suskind. Boring. Boring. Well trust me, neither the book nor the film are anywhere even close to being boring. They explore the concept of senses of attraction of animal-like instincts by following the life of Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, a kid which was born with an exceptional sense of smell. And now when I say exceptional sense of smell, I mean he can smell glass, he can smell stones, he wouldn't even need to rely on his other senses as he could easily walk blindfolded through a city relying just on his nose. As Guinuria grows and becomes a teenager and a young man, the world around him starts to change and so does his relationship with his senses as it starts to get out of control and just like any other urge, he feels the need to satisfy it. Perfume the Story of the Murderer is a very dark film because it explores the idea of physical desires pushed to the limit, the concept of death and it also managed to convey the feeling of smell, which obviously we wouldn't be able to perceive through the screen. Watching this film is like entering a maze of emotions, of smells which we can't perceive but which are brought to life through a fantastic colour palette, sounds and silences. We enter a very physical, intimate aspect of the character's life. If you like works such as Criminal Minds, the Hannibal Lecter trilogy, or the TV series From Hell or Seven, which all explore very dark tunnels of the human mind, then I think you would enjoy Perfect story of a murderer. The next film on this list is probably the least famous one but at the same time it is one of the movies that inspired me to create this list and that is a 2003 film Goodbye Lenin starring Daniel Brühl years before his more famous roles in films such as Captain America or Inglorious Bastards. Goodbye Lenin is set in Berlin in Germany in 1989, a time in which the whole city was divided in two by a wall, East Berlin and West Berlin. Now without getting into a deep social political analysis, let's just say that the two sides lived completely different lifestyles. The West side was, let's say, more modernized, it was heavily influenced by the United States, while the other side was influenced by the Soviet Union. This East side is where our main character, Alex, lives. Unfortunately, Alex's mother, which was a proud supporter of the Socialist Party, falls into a coma. And the doctors warn Alex that if she is to wake up, she must not be exposed 
to big emotions or big shocks. Well, what happens is that during the coma, the world changes as the Berlin Wall falls, the city is reunited and heavily influenced by the United States, and it becomes how we know it today. So imagine what Christiane would go through if one day she simply had to get up and go to Burger King and drink a Coke and visit a brand shiny new supermarket, pay with a different currency, while society around her had changed radically, even from the most simplest things such as clothes. This film is wonderful. It's a hidden gem which portrays a fictional story with a real background. It includes real life events, events that changed the world and shaped it how we know it today. It brings on screen a beautiful portrayal of family unity and love and what a person is willing to do to make their loved ones happy. It also has many hilarious scenes as Alex tries to do anything physically possible in order to not make his mother be shocked by this new world. The next film I'd like to speak about is The Boat That Rocked, also known as Pirate Radio. A 2009 film starring Philip Seymour Hoffman, Kenneth Branagh, Tom Storage, Bill Nighy, Nick Frost and many others. The Boat That Rocked is loosely based on events which took place in the United Kingdom back in the 60s, a time in which pirate radios had started to illegally broadcast content which was not usually available on other regular stations and would include rock music, swearing, non-conformist debates, and so on. The Boat That Rocked follows the story of a teenager which is sent off to spend some time on a boat in the North Sea from which the radio station Radio Rock is run. The film follows the life of this eclectic group of people that live on board the boat in their own clandestine, revolutionary, alternative uh, society. Broadcasting content which to us might sound completely normal, but which at the time was completely unacceptable for the British government. The Boat That Rocked is a rock and roll lover's heaven. I was going to include it in my video about the best films about music, but in the end I decided to put um, Sing Street instead. And as a rock lover myself, I appreciate how it includes the game-changing elements of rock culture which are not only limited to music. I'm speaking of attitude, clothing, way of speaking, ideals, respect, innovation, acceptance. These men were out there in the North see broadcasting content which an entire nation loved listening to but which was not considered socially acceptable. So I definitely recommend this film to all rock and roll fans and lovers of British comedy. The last film on this list is the oldest as it is from the 90s and that is Natural Born Killers. Stop 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 stop. It was a big success when it premiered back at the time I know that but over the course of time it has lost a lot of its fame. Many people have never even heard of this film and it's been kept in the shadow hidden by bigger similar names such as the Tarantino films. Natural Bone Killers was actually written by Tarantino, directed by Oliver Stone, and it is a very violent and very explicit movie starring Robert Johnny Jr., Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. I don't want to say too much about the plot because I wouldn't like to spoil the film for anybody. Let's just say it's about a couple, Mickey and Mallory, portrayed by Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis, which leave their past of abuse and run away together, becoming a murderous killer couple. The film analyses the couple's insane minds and thoughts, the reasons behind their crimes, how they totally abandon themselves to their instincts and their emotions. Both Juliet Lewis and Woody Harrelson did an awesome job here, especially Lewis. They managed to portray the characters vile, malicious traits, and they were absolutely deranged and terrifying. The film also analyses how crowds tend to be attracted to the couple, proving that society is an audience, a demanding audience which constantly needs something to love and hate. And it shows how the media thrives in this hell, creating headline after headline. If you are a fan of Tarantino's films and you are familiar with the concept of aestheticization of violence, so the concept of something visually beautiful within its gore, so a beautiful image of a gun wound and blood gushing out of it. You will probably like this film. It presents Mickey and Mallory's life as an insane trip down the worst circle of hell, but in an eerily beautiful manner, with a strange play on lights, colours, narration, as if we were following the irrational thoughts that were running through the characters' minds. And that's it for today. I would probably add many more films to this list, and I'm sure most of them will come to mind as soon as I click that publish button, so there will probably be a second and third part to this video. So if you'd like to hear more about the topic or follow up on more movie related content, make sure to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye.